thing. We're telling people that to avoid living under a bridge, to avoid drinking water from a sewage, to avoid being a beggar on the street corner and being what we call homeless is to go to college and get a degree. There are so many people with degrees who are living under bridges right now. People with degrees graduating college and working $10, $15 an hour drive through any suburban neighborhood and see how many cars are parked in the driveway. That is for the parents and the two children who graduated college and had to move back home because they can't afford to live on their own because they have student loan payments that are so astronomically high because they can't get a job with their degree. Parents are frustrated and yelling at kids. The kids are frustrated. The, the, the conversation family life is ruined. Meanwhile, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and all the billionaire boys are sitting back sipping caviar and champagne and going ha 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 like Santa Claus all day. Do you see why I'm saying it's the politics? Because at this stage, it's not red and blue. Red and blue is for you and me. That dividing line does not operate here. At this level, it's money that counts. It's finding a politician who is going to believe what you say and paying them off to do what they, you want them to do. So they divide the country along red and blue lines. It works here at this level, not there. Meanwhile, you and I are asleep at the switch. Get a drink, go home. Austerity is a swindle, right? Go home, chill, relax, while the billionaire boys and girls determine our fate and our outcome. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to get up and start asking questions. And I know you're all going to say, well, you know, my kids have graduated college. What about your grandchildren? Do you know how many grandparents have to underwrite loans because the parents have done all they can? Do you know how many grandparents are supporting their grandchildren in college? I just want to know the division between rich and poor is shocking. It is absolutely shocking. And many of you who think you're rich, you're borderline. You better watch out because you're living off credit and you need to ask yourself, how much is it costing you to maintain your lifestyle as it is? And if you find that you are robbing Peter to pay Paul and you're saving less and less, you need to get out of that. That means you're living above your means. How do you know you're living above your means? You're not saving anything. If your savings account is smaller at the end of every month after you pay all of your bills, you are living above your means. Your bills should be less than 50% of what you earn. Are you all shocked? Okay, well, sit there. If your bills are 75% of what you earn, you are living above your means and you're destined for trouble. One problem is going to send you into catastrophic situations. I know because I lived it. So many of us buy into the idea that we want to live this lifestyle that they say, if you're not living in this neighborhood and if you're not driving this kind of car, then you're not relevant. Relevant to who? Relevancy is, is it's highly subjective. I'm relevant to me. That's all I should be worried about and what works for me in my situation. If you don't like it, tough. You meet people coming to your life. I tell them straight up, this is me and this is where I am. If it's not good for you, keep it moving. I don't have time to waste. So you find yourself, you graduate from college and you're stuck. And you're like, what the heck is going on? My friend here is making some serious stuff. Lots of people want wage packet from the street. Do you talk about it? I had, I had a conversation a few weeks ago on, on, on Twitter and a young man had graduated college. He's married with children and told me he had nothing. He couldn't get a job and he couldn't feed his kids. And he graduated from college and he doesn't have a criminal background. 28 years old, doing it the right way. He's not running around town with a bunch of baby mamas, right? W ladies and gentlemen, wake up. We have decimated the communities. So when you drive into communities, have you gone into Main Street in any town? Do you see any mom and pop businesses? 
everywhere I go, that's one of the first things I want to check because it tells me where that town is going, right? In the black community and in the Hispanic community, it's all the little bodegas and the little black businesses and ethnic stores and so on, they're wiped out. Replaced by big box stores that can buy the stuff in greater bulk and sell it back. You know the big box stores, Walmart and company, okay? <laughs> Interest rates only apply to the little people. Yes, because when you have a lot of money and you go into the bank to borrow money, you negotiate the interest rate. You're like, I'm not paying that. I'm paying you 0.1%. Boom, that's it. You don't like it? Well, I'm going to the next bank, right? People, we need to take back the control. We have allowed others to dictate to us how we should live. I'm so alarmed that young people paying $1,100 a month for rent because you want to live fancy and you want to show people that, well, I've made it. You haven't made it yet. You still have bills to pay. You Look at your future. Your future is coming at you. Set yourselves up. And if you if you're plan if you have no a young person right now, it might not be you who is planning on going to college, you need to ask the question, the degree that you're going for, can it feed you in 10 years after you graduate from college? What are you going to school to study? And ask them that question because the colleges are not going to. The colleges are going to make it real easy for you to choose an elective. Because as we learned, out of 231 colleges, their graduation rate was 25%. Out of 615 colleges, their graduation rate was 50%. Correspondingly, the same numbers apply for people who graduated and could not get degrees. The politics of student loans. You still have the student loan to pay for whether you got a job or not. That's when this thing became painful for me. So that's why I am talking about it because it's knocking on my door and something has got to be done. There is a legislation on the books in DC right now that the education secretary is opposed to because she favors free market approach to education. And there is a legislation that wants to hold colleges accountable for the number of people who are graduating without degrees. And the number of people who are graduating with a degree that is useless. We need to hold them accountable. So your child is going to go to college. We need to find out where <laughs> we need to start asking questions. My friends, where, what, what's up? We need to start saying seriously. I, my daughter went to school to be a lawyer. She didn't come to me and say, I'm going to go to school to get a degree in humanities. I'm like, excuse me. My youngest daughter is going to college soon. She wants to be a doctor. She has options. I'm like, go to college, get a degree that gives you options. Right? Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to pay that student loan payment. Right? And they have, as you say, my friend, they have enslaved us to the idea that if you don't get a four-year degree, you're not doing anything. Can you believe it? And you go to school, you get the degree. This is the thing, you get the degree. And you still can't work to pay off the loan. And most people have a degree and they're not working in the field. Once upon a time, this was not the way it was. How did we change? And then they tell you that science and technology and engineering is where the society is going. At the same time, the public school system is not facilitating science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It does not have that focus because they take the money out of the public schools and put it into for-profit educational entities. Folks, we need to wake up. We need to stop singing hunky-dory songs and think every day is a hunky-dory day and we're just going to meet down by the river and sing Kumbaya or whatever you're going to sing. We need to wake up and realize this stuff changed overnight under our feet while we were asleep at the watch and that you cannot expect 
to get out of the system today anything that you put in because the system change the people change the system overnight to suit them and you and i need to wake up and we seriously need to i scratch my head at artificial intelligence and why it's not being taken into account don't even start with artificial intelligence i'm gonna do a show on it i'm doing some research right now i'm gonna do a show on it look at you all are you all with me are you all with me on this are you seeing the reality that is facing us are you all just seeing this dudes and dudettes we gotta wake up this stuff they uh, they have shifted the country from under us while we were asleep at the switch while we wanted to be entertained without even being aware of what is going on we gotta start holding corporations accountable just like our parents and grandparents did you remember the letter to the editor we have this it's the most powerful tool. Use this to communicate with them. Go to their Facebook page, tweet them, they're all on Twitter, and say, what's up with education? When you start calling them out, if five people, if you graduated from a college, and if five of you start asking that college, tweet that college right now on Twitter, and ask them, how come I graduated with a degree that I can't get a job in? It's over for that college. All of a sudden it becomes a trend. It's over. That's the power that we have. We got to marginalize. We got to mobilize and start using it. Because if we don't, we are imperiled. Because they're gonna continue to pass legislation that benefits them and their millions. So you have a couple million dollars. Well, it's only gonna, you have two children. It's only gonna cost you less than five hundred thousand dollars to educate them you can do that but for those of us who are still trying to make the first million it's a bit of an uphill battle but you know what's not uphill our ability to talk we need to stop wasting time tweeting entertainers they've made their money they're being paid to do whatever we need to start tweeting politicians and start saying, what's up with this? What's up with this? What's up with this? We need to start. And when we start, we get the ball rolling because something's gotta be done. Look, look at you all feeling me. You are all feeling this because it happens to all of us. Student loan payments are astronomical. My, when my daughter got her bill for $2,000, seriously, I, put, I did this. I was dumbfounded. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I was like, $2,000? Are you serious? Where is the job that is going to pay her to live so she can make a $2,000 loan payment? And you just graduated college. We should, we should be asking colleges for guarantees that when you graduate, they find a job for you. Okay, so you're gonna train me to work in engineering? Find me a job after I get my four or five year degree in engineering. Find me a job. We need to start holding them accountable. So the, so the colleges through the accreditation agencies are getting whatever they want done. It's time for us, the public, to get what we want done. Use this, y'all. Come on, use it. And by the way, come January, you know, Twitter's terms of service have changed. So if I do a podcast, like I'm podcasting right now, and Twitter can take my content and advertise it and use it the way they want to, so you won't be seeing me on Twitter. You can join my regular podcast on Block Talk Radio. We can talk all day. Matter of fact, why don't you just switch over to YouTube? that has not told me they're gonna earn, they're gonna own my content. Twitter is jacked up if they think I'm gonna give them access to my content that they can reproduce to benefit them. Hey, say hey Harriet, say hey back at me. Hey, dudes, it's me and you. We're all in this together. Judettes, it's me and you. We gotta look out for one another. Because true, I never thought I'd see the day when I would say that. <laughs> I never thought that day would come. Like seriously, 
when I look at the large corporation like Amazon not paying taxes, I'm supposed to be happy with that. We have a crumbling infrastructure in America. The bridges are breaking down. Our roads need to be fixed. They're cracked. Our industries are gone. Hospitals, the things that make life stable. We're closing police departments because of budgetary concerns, seriously. So where's public safety? Where is the public works department to fix the roads and to make sure public buildings are safe? Been in a public building where the elevator isn't working? Do you see what I'm saying? But you're gonna tell, tell me that you want a free market approach to higher education? Baby, take that somewhere else can happen people we got to have dialogue these kinds of things we need to be aware of them so we can start the conversation please I'm asking you do you see me on Twitter all day talking about stuff join the conversation ask them yourself I guarantee you like I said five of you graduated from the University of so-and-so and you're not working in the field that you got your degree in if you tweet that place I guarantee you they will shut their Twitter feed down. Are you hearing me? You want me to tell you how powerful your communication is? Two years ago, 2018, the local power company had an issue on my in my neighborhood. I kid you not. Like I didn't have power for two, four days. Actually, it started on a Sunday morning. I didn't get power back until Saturday because they ignored my area. I don't know what was going on. People on the other block got power, but I didn't. By the third day, I'd had enough. I tweeted the power company. They thought I was a joke. I tweeted them. They responded by sending someone out. The person came and did nothing and still had no power. I didn't tweet them again. I called the governor's office. The governor's office directed me to the Public Services Commission, who governs, has oversight of public utilities. I called the mayor's office, the governor's office, and the Public Services Commission. You know what was the end result? The end result was that the power company had to pay us back for the time we were without. Since then, I am the first one notified if they're gonna have a problem in my area. My power is fixed all the time. That's the power of your voice. You have to speak up. We're too, we're afraid. What are you afraid of? Speak up. If they don't hear from you, they're gonna assume that you don't know. Speak up. When you speak up, they become attentive and realize they're gonna change it. Speak up. We're too quiet. We sit back and take stuff. Time is running out, I gotta go. I didn't realize, <laughs> sorry, thanks, <laughs> right? We gotta speak up. So you're gonna speak up. Start tweeting your college, your alma mater, and ask them, how come I'm working in a field that I didn't graduate in? Just ask the question and see what happens. You're going to be surprised, right? Thank you so much for being a part of my show this morning. My name is Harriet Kemp with Down to Earth. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast on Anchor FM. Just click on the link that says support this podcast. 99 cents per month helps us to continue doing what we do. You can also listen to us on Breaker, Overcast, uh, Spotify, Radio Public, uh, Apple, Google, and a variety of other podcast platforms. Help us. So go to Anchor FM, look for Down to Earth, it will pop up, and then click on Support This Podcast. You will know because you'll see my logo and so on. And it will say Harriet Kammer. My name is right there. Help us to continue bringing this to you. I trust you and I thank you at the same time. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to talk about some more of this stuff, don't you think? we got to have this conversation. I know most of you are like, dang, this is real. It is. It's so real. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks so much. Be blessed.